Hey, uh, it's been a while, but um, I'm making another video, and actually it's surprising that I'm making it today, and I won't get into a long story, but I've been off for a little bit. Some personal stuff's come up, and unfortunately not, not good personal stuff, but don't worry, I mean, I'm not going to get into it now. But um, nothing worthy of a video. And um, I wanted to do this video for a while now, and... It's, um, again, we're looking at Bible stuff again. I know I've probably already done this one to death, but I just felt I needed to address this. And my problem with um, a lot of different denominations, let's say, is uh, being hypocritical. And I don't understand that if you hold a, a book sacred, that you can disagree with parts of it and still call it sacred, I guess, is, is very confusing to me. And this is a perfect keep it simple uh, video, because that's how I look at this stuff. When I read the Bible, I read it word for word, and it is either the only leniency, not leniency, the only way I would say something doesn't have to be word for word is when it's, uh, I'm sorry, I can't find the word, an allegory or a um, parable, something like that. Uh, they don't mean it literally. Like, um, I, I'm a belief that in the creation story, uh, I'm not totally convinced there's a real Adam and Eve. I think it could be a story to talk about original sin or Noah's flood. We talk about Noah's flood. Obviously, there's no way water could flood the whole entire planet. It's, it's, it's not, and then being able, there's videos on YouTube all about, um, all about uh, how much time it would take to fill the ark, how much, how big the ark would need to be to hold every species, all of that stuff, and you know how do certain species get to certain parts of the planet? I'm not here to tear that apart either. There's plenty of videos about that, but um, my my reason for speaking on it is I understand there are some parts that are parables or allegories, or if I'm using that word correctly, um, that are obvious at least to me. My problem though is when you read certain passages passages of the Bible. It does say something in black and white, and I just wonder how other denominations, Christian denominations, can just not worry about that. And there's two main subjects that I've kind of already addressed a little bit in a couple other videos, but I need to do it now in reference to the Bible. And um, it just, it just, it's just been bothering me lately. And maybe if I do this video, it'll get it off my chest. Um, homosexuality and women ministers or priests or whatever. And I know I've done those two videos already, kind of, sorta, but. What I want to talk about here is um, is the simple explanation based on the scriptures. Uh, Protestantism, Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, the different divisions of Christianity, you have Orthodoxy and, and Roman Catholics, and obviously you know what they believe. They're pretty adamant about all those different beliefs, but Protestants actually believe, mostly believe in, really very strictly in Sola Scriptura, or that scripture is the basis for all dogma of faith, everything related to faith is in, is in the Bible the accepted books of the Bible that we have today, more or less. Uh, at least the Protestant side, 66 books. So uh, my issue with that is if you read the Bible, and I have one here, um, if you read the Bible, there are places in this Bible that say you can't be homosexual and you can't be a woman minister, reverend, priest, whatever. Before I go any further, I have to say this. I am not against homosexuality. I am not against women ministers. I live in the United States of America. I believe in freedom. I believe in religious freedom. Just because, and I guess my reason, my my religious reason, uh, my religious stance on homosexuality, which I've already done on another video, I guess you would you would call it a sinful act. But we all do sinful acts. So should those people be ostracized from the church? I say no. I don't. I think it's a sinful act. Like if. Um, and if I steal something, that's a sinful act, but I'm not ostracized from the church for it. So, just so you knew that, if you didn't know that about me, I, I don't think of homosexuality as people should be eliminated from the church. Um, I do have an issue with uh, homosexual priest or bishop, and, uh, and, that, and I know the Episcopalian Church had one here in New Hampshire a while ago. Um, you can't have a practicing homosexual bishop that follows this book. You just can't. It just it can't do it. Uh, you're living in you're living in sin according to this book. So how can you be uh, someone who who's in, not in charge of this book, but in charge of the faith that uses this book? Uh, same with women ministers. I'm, I'm not saying women ministers are, are a sin. I'm saying w w how can you have a woman minister when it says in here repeatedly that you can't have it? 
they if they I had to have more respect for those denominations if the, they, if that woman priest or minister was carrying around the book that had different books in it that didn't have those references in it then I could say okay you're following your belief okay fine but how do you carry the Bible with those verses in it and preach from it knowing in here it says in here you can't be a minister or how do you how are you a uh, homosexual bishop and walk around a homosexual priest whatever and walk around with this book with those references saying you can't be homosexual or at least you're not at least be a in, in a state of grace or whatever you want to call it not sinning I don't know how you do it so um, the rest of this video I'm just going to point out a few of these things that we have them in here just so you know my, what point I'm coming from um, it, it's just some of it's, it, 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 it's it's ridiculous to me so I'm going to go through real slow and talk about it real quick I got two areas we'll go with homosexuality first and then we'll go into women ministers next and um, a lot of these references you probably already know about, but I'm going to read them from a Bible that is considered a um, modern version. It's the Alexandrian text, which you probably know I'm not a big fan of. However, it's an accepted, widely accepted, literal translation of the Scriptures. So I wanted to use something that was not messed with too much. I know people have issues with the King James Version that things were inserted and, and whatever, and I wanted to pick a version that wasn't um, a liberal translation, so I picked a uh, New American Standard Version. And this is the 1977 version, and the reason I clicked, I clicked, at least I chose the 1977 version, is the 1995 version has been made a little more politically correct, so modify a little too much for my liking at all. Um, so I, I, I figured this would be a better example. So I'm going to use this Bible, so I'm going to go through a few verses. I have one, two, three, five verses in the Bible that directly say you can't be a practicing homosexual and be living... Uh, I can't find the words, I'm sorry. Um, living not in a sinful act, I guess. Uh, I'm sorry. And of course I get on camera and I get indigestion. It's weird. <laughs> like I'm stage fright or something. So I'll go through real uh, not quickly, but I'm not going not, not to take all day. I'm going to go to Corinthians 7.2. Uh, I put tabs in here, so let's see if I can figure this out. Corinthians. Corinthians 7.2. I got it right here. And it's nice and big print, too. That's another reason I, li I like this to refer to. 7-2. Oh, of course, it's split between two pages. That's why. 7-2. Uh, but because of, immor of immoralities, let each man have his own wife. Really? And let each woman have her own husband. So a man's supposed to have a wife, and a wife is supposed to have a husband. Uh, yeah kind of says it point blank there. Let the husband fulfill his duties to his wife, and likewise also the wife to her husband. So the wife and the husband are supposed to be together. Wife and husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise also the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Stop depriving one another except by agreement for a time that you may devote yourself to prayer and come together again let, lest Satan tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I kept reading there because that's also a good verse to use if you're married and one of the other is in a state where they don't, or they're denying you, denying you your marital, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a good verse to use to mess with your spouse. I do that once in a while and my wife just kind of shakes her head. But the first part of it, 7-2, uh, let each woman have her own husband and a, and a husband his own wife. That's different, obviously different sex. So um, that's that one. And with a little extra. Sorry about that. Um, real easy to go back to Leviticus. I think we all know these ones, um, but I'll just go through them real quick. 18-22. Uh, 18-22, you shall not lie with a male as one lies with a female. It is an abomination. So right there it says, black and white, you cannot lie with the same sex. You can't have sex with each other, same sex. It just says that in black and white. It and don't say, oh, it just says lie. No, no. You know what lie with somebody means. Give me a break. So it says you can't do it. It gets even worse, the next one, uh, Leviticus 20. And, of course, these are Bible pages, so they stick together. Leviticus 20, 13. Want to go too far? Oh, 19, sorry. 2013. Boy, I'm sorry. I'm having a really hard time with this. Somebody's going to come home. I won't be able to finish this video. 2013. There we go. If there is a man who lies with a male as those who lie with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood guiltness is upon them. So it pretty much says in here... Um, verbatim, you will be put to death 
if you commit those acts. You can't carry this around and be a homosexual bishop. And I say that because they're practicing. You can't be a practicing homosexual and, and in my opinion, be a bishop or a priest and spread the word of God. I, I just or preach to people like you're an authority. I just can't. I mean, I have a hard enough time. Not, I don't have a hard enough time, but just being, if you are homosexual and you are a Christian, I don't know how you get around that if you're practicing. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's very difficult, I think. Uh, Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Let's go back to Corinthians. I can see if I can screw this up. Corinthians. What are my tabs? Corinthians. These tabs maybe weren't such a good idea. Corinthians 6. Romans. Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Here we go. Or do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminates, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkens, nor revilers, nor swindlers shall inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're one of those, you're not going to be in the kingdom of God. It says it right in there. How, do you, how are you a practicing homosexual bishop and deal with that? I don't know. And the last reference, uh, Romans. Romans 1.26. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. For their, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. In the same way, also, the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons <laughs> the due penalty of their error. What's that mean? Hmm. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. Okay, so that, again, black and white says uh, that you're doing wrong stuff. Again, if you're in a position of authority anyway, I don't see how you can do that. So that's it on being gay or homosexual. Um, I don't have a problem with it personally, but I don't see how Christians or homosexuals can get around this stuff and think that they're being okay. I mean, I had one uh, homosexual friend tell me that they're a Christian and they're homosexual and they believe that they're sitting when they commit those acts. So in my opinion, I think at least they're admitting that if they're going to follow this book. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say homosexuality is wrong, sexuality is wrong. It's not my call. I mean, I live in a free country, and I just don't have a problem with it that way. So, um, that's it on the homosexual thing in the Bible. Um, and again, I've already talked about this a little bit, women ministers. I don't have a problem with them, but I just don't see, again, how you walk around with this book, preach from it as a woman minister, and have all these references saying you can't be a minister. How do you do that? All right, Acts 18. Did the Acts 18. Acts 18.26. Now these are all things that might be considered for women ministers. And it says here, And he began to speak out boldly in the synagogue. But when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. So a woman was showing a guy what Christianity really was supposed to be. And that should be fine. There's never nothing else in here saying a woman can't talk to a guy. I mean, you, you just, there's nothing in there saying that. So that doesn't say that they can be a minister. It just says they can talk about God. Uh, Acts 2. And that's Acts 2.17. I'm doing a little better with these ones. Acts 2.17. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in these days pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Again, nothing. I never knew of anything saying a woman couldn't be couldn't be prophetic. I knew nothing about that. Never denied that. That's not that's not saying they can be a minister. It just says that they can prophesy. Prophesy. And the last one, Galatians three, which is a very famous one that is used to say that women can be ministers. If I can find Galatians, because there's so many tabs in here, sorry. There we go, Galatians 3. You hear that dog barking, here we go. Galatians 3.28. Uh, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, sorry. 
Well, obviously, yeah. I mean, if you're going to go to heaven, hopefully, and you're a Christian, they don't. God doesn't care what level of society you are. He doesn't care what sex you are. That doesn't mean you can be a minister or a priest. It doesn't say that at all. Okay? So up to this point, if that's all that was in the Bible, I'd be fine with minister, uh, women ministers. I, why, why would I care? It's these next three verses that are the problem. And I've already gone over this in another video. That's why I'm going to be quick. I'm going to be real quick, actually. Timothy, which is the big one. And a lot of people say Timothy's not even Paul's writing. So that's fine if it's not in the Bible, but it's in the Bible. If it's in the Bible and you don't follow it, then you need you can't carry it around with you. First Timothy two. Two twelve. Sorry about the dog. But I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man, but to remain quiet. So if a woman is supposed to be quiet in the church, how is she supposed to be a minister? I don't know. Timothy three two. An overseer, and some, some, um, some Bibles say bishop, uh, deacon, or something like that, but this one says an overseer, then must, then must be above reproach the husband of one wife. The husband of one wife. We obviously know what that means. A male, and he has a, wife, a female wife. Okay? Um, now, how, now, here's something against Roman Catholics. The Roman Catholics who follow the Pope, how do they say that priests can't? That priests have to be unmarried. It doesn't say that here. It says that they just, they have to have one. They can only have one wife. So I don't know where the Roman Catholic Church goes about saying that a priest can't be married. That's another matter. But again, people just do what they want and they don't follow what's in here. I don't get that. If you're gonna carry this around and say this is an authority, how do you get around all that stuff? I just don't get it. I don't get it. So, but as far as a woman, I don't see how a woman minister can stand in front of the pew and read that verse. How does a woman read? Timothy 3.2. How do you do it? I'd love to see it happen. I'd love to see it one of these days. Corinthians. Last one I'm going to talk about. Corinthians. No, that's Galatians. Corinthians. There we go. Corinthians 14, 33 through 35. Here we go. 33. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Let the woman keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak. But let them subject themselves just as the law also says. And if they desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is improper for a woman to speak in church. I don't believe in that personally myself. I don't like that at all. I don't like that verse, but it's in there. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. I mean, how can a woman be a minister in a church? I don't see it. I don't, I don't get it. And I don't want you to get the wrong impression like I'm against women ministers. I'm not. My, what, I'm, what I question is how can a woman preach from this book? How can a woman preach from this print? If, you to told her, if a woman had to, taught, had to, had to say Timothy 3, 2, how does she do it? How do you do it? I wish I had a broad enough audience that I could run into a woman minister who would respond to this video. And please, if you know a woman minister... I'd love to hear their explanation for this. I've looked online, and it's, it's just more, uh, not ignorance, but ignoring the problem kind of thing. I want to, you know, want to say, if you say that verse, how can that be right? I, 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 yeah, it just drives me nuts. I don't see how you can do that. If you can do whatever you want, then what do you need the book for? Yeah. At least with me, I look at the Old New Testament as Scripture. I do have problems with some verses, but I, I can't say anything about them. They're, they're in there. And I don't, I, you know me, I don't really follow the Old Testament. To me, the Old Testament is a Jewish Bible. We don't need to get into that whole thing. People have already commented on my other videos about that. We don't need to do that now. But um, I don't sit there and say that this book has everything, because the Old Testament to me is not like the New Testament. Um, I've told you before, if you can see my books over here, I do have a couple of books, and they're Orthodox Bibles. The uh, Eastern Orthodox Bible and the um, Orthodox... New Testament are the two books I generally use. So I carry the New Testament with me. So that's my feelings. I just don't see how practicing homosexuals who don't regard themselves as living in sin can, Christians who can walk around with that book and preach from it or talk about it or read it. And I don't understand how women ministers can, can minister out of that book knowing that there's passages in that book that says they can't be ministers. How do you do that? I actually would like to see comments on that and, and I know I don't have a huge audience but Boy, I would really love to know. And um, again, and I want to end on this one note again. I am not against homosexuality. 
as far as living and walking around, whatever, they have the same freedoms I do. And I don't have anything against women ministers. I wouldn't be able to go to one because I can't get around the scripture part. But I understand they exist. What are you going to do? So, and the bishops were homosexuals. I have a huge problem with that because it, to me it's hypocritical. I mean, not hypocritical. I don't know. I guess it is hypocritical. How do you do that? I'd love to hear. I know there was a real famous one, uh, a bishop in New Hampshire, um, where I live, uh, a few years ago. And I just don't understand how he got around that. He, had, he wore a bulletproof vest to his vestment when he was made the bishop of New Hampshire. And, I, and you know, his, his, his husband was with him. And, you know, they, they celebrated, and I'm sure they went home that night, and, you know, <laughs> how, do you, how do you get around it? I don't have a problem with what they did, but how do you get around that and do your job? I, I just would like to hear some, something on that, I guess. I don't know. These people are, a lot of atheists and stuff I, I watch, and a lot of, uh, and you see on YouTube, talk about uh, problems with Christianity and all that, but as a Christian, I, I like to hear, this, this, do, this does drive me nuts. I can, you know, the whole problem with the Trinity and all that, that's fine. But how do you get around that stuff? To me, that's black and white says it right in there. And how do you get around it? I know I keep saying it. I'm going to end the video. Thanks for watching.